Hi, I'm Suze Shaner with Sage Leadership Strategies, and I'm your host today of Community Forum. And I have the Carlson Pro Care team, a physical therapy practice. I have I have three members of the team here to talk to us, give us some tips, and talk to us about working from home. So um, first, I'm going to introduce. Uh, I'm going to introduce them one at a time, and I'm going to have them give you an overview on their backgrounds, and then we'll get into it. So first, I want to introduce Andrea Myers. Welcome, Andrea. Hi. Thanks for having us, Suze. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So great to have you. So if you can just uh, give the viewers an overview on your background, number of years in the field, your passion for the work, and if you have any kind of niche area that you focus in on, that'd be great. Oh, absolutely. So I've been a physical therapist for 14 years. Um, I've been working at Carlson for a little under two years. Um, I got into physical therapy because I was originally studying molecular biology. I thought that I would go into research. And I just really felt like I needed to find a profession where I worked with people more directly. And physical therapy really sounded like the right one for me. Um, my niche practice, I specialize in manual therapy. I also treat a lot of athletes. I'm a former professional cyclist. So in my practice, I see a lot of cyclists, runners, triathletes. Um, and being part of the Carlson Pro Care team is just a dream for me because I'm with completely like-minded therapists in the way that we treat patients. That's great. I, and, and in full transparency for our viewers, you were actually my physical therapist. I'm going to let people know that when I had rotator cuff surgery and you also helped me fit into my Peloton bike, you do bike fittings. That was really, um, let me tell you, having rotator cuff ther therapy is not for the faint of heart. Uh, can I just say that? <laughs> and you were great with it. So, no, so it yeah, no, go ahead. Sorry. What? What? Oh, so so um, so it sounds like being a physical therapist definitely um, is different than if you were in a lab all the time as a molecular biologist. So it was a way for you to blend your science with people. Oh, yes, absolutely. OK. All right. So now we're going to move on. We'll come back. I know you've got some things to show us. But so we're going to come back to you. But then now I want to also introduce Anthony uh, Pepburn. I hope I'm saying your last name correctly, Anthony. Peburn, that's fine. Peburn, I'm sorry. Okay. It's so been much, much worse background. than that, so you're fine, Suze. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, and and you treated my shoulder a couple times too. So def definitely uh, tell folks about your background and your name. Sure. I've been, I've been a physical therapist for 21 years. I graduated from the University of Hartford. Um, I've always been at Carlson Therapy. This was my first job out of school. Um and treating in an orthopedic setting is wonderful. I mean, I've worked with people as young as 10 days old and as old as 100 years old. Um, it's a lot of fun, you know, working with people, helping them get back to their daily life, daily function, get rid of some pain, meeting a lot of interesting characters out there. Uh, you know, as Andrea touched on a little bit, we're all like minded. We all kind of specialize in you know, manual type therapies, we, we kind of look at the body a little bit differently than a lot of other people do, kind of look at it more a little bit holistically. And, uh, and that's the fun. That's the challenge. Everyone's a, a different puzzle, even if they have the same types of, you know, problems, pain, whatever, there could be lots of different causes to it. And that's what kind of drives us every day to kind of get up and, and help everyone with their own individual puzzle. Yeah, that's amazing. How lucky are you that you figured out what you wanted to do so early on and you've kind of stuck with your place and found your people? Crazy lucky. I mean, even in high school, just knowing that, you know, you wanted to work with people, you wanted interested in how the human body worked, you know, always fairly athletic, that sort of business. Just deep down gut always kind of knew this was the thing and then finding the right people to do it with they're kind of like second family you know for 21 years it's been a it's been a great run so it's, well, that's really it's fun. That's, that's really special and i like the way you said it that's interesting um 10 days old to 100 years old that's oh, that's yeah. quite a range that's the whole gamut right there uh, so thanks well welcome um so now we're gonna meet mark do for, for, mark you're gonna have to say your last name because i know Dufresne. i can't say it different Right. I, I, I knew I'd get it wrong. OK, so so, Mark, um, tell us about your background and then we can talk a little bit about the practice. 
Okay. Uh, I've been a therapist for about 36 years. Um, and I am probably responsible for bringing manual therapy to this area um, when it all started. Um, my partner, Rick Carlson, I uh, started the practice, I believe, in 1983 in Richfield. And actually, I met Rick when he was teaching for Stanley Paris, an international uh, speaker um, in New York City. And that's when I, as he was assisting me with learning a manipulation technique, um, we got to talk and found out we were just, uh, we lived very close to one another and he offered me a job. And that's how it started. Um, I'm so fortunate because uh, I've had two jobs. I started at the hospital. I did every form of medicine from nursing home to inpatient to rehab services. And then uh, with Rick's uh, tutelage and guidance and encouragement, I started studying manual therapy with Stan Stanley Paris and started my journey in uh, constantly looking to enhance people's potential. Um, so that's that's quite a uh, range and wealth of experience and information uh, and wisdom I'm sure you've picked up along the way. For folks who are not that familiar, because maybe they, you know, they've never been to a physical therapist. I think a lot of folks think either, you know, an injury or in my case, I had surgery, recovery. Um, can you just explain what manual therapy and manual manipulation is? So that's a great question. I'd love to answer this. And I've been trying to do this for years to explain it to people. So basically, as a physical therapist, we're trying to reach your your goals. And but this is not through medication or surgery it can be before or after. But what we're actually do doing is looking at the body holistically, as well as system oriented. So we do a physical evaluation, we will use many different techniques, we will look at range of motion, strength, mechanics, the way the muscle tightens, the way you move. And with a lot of our postgraduate training, uh, we use uh, more muscle energy, counter strain techniques. There are many techniques that we do. Traditionally, therapists just stretch, exercise you uh, and put you on stem. Totally different experience here. It's a head to toe. We listen to your goals. We, you may have a problem with your knee, during our physical exam, we're going to look at your pelvis, we will look at your posture, we'll look at your ankle, and we're not looking to uh, mask the pain or exercise you in a bad movement pattern. We're looking to find the cause. And that's one thing Rick always instilled into me is don't get fixated on making the pain go away. Focus more on the biomechanics. Why do they have pain? Because once you figure that, your outcome is much better and you can design an individual program. You can go to Google and get a billion exercises for the knee, but you know, if, if you don't analyze the person's limitation, their comorbidities, your success rate won't will be you know average at best. Yeah. So so it sounds like you're trying to get at the root cause. I mean, obviously the human system is a complex system and everything's interrelated and interconnected and you're trying to get at the root cause. So you're treating the whole system and, and not just symptom management. Yes, exactly. And when we say the system, we, you know, traditionally physical therapists think more of uh, muscle and skeletal. All of our training, when we say manual therapy, we've done extensive hundreds, hundreds, maybe thousands of hours in various techniques uh, and where it could be from mo mobilization to positional release techniques, uh, you know, some term that you may not used to hearing is Feldenkrais, cranial sacral, even visceral manipulation. We look at how each system, look at the body as an ecosystem. If one system in the body is having trouble, it affects all the system. What we're trying to analyze, what is the major root cause and then see how to help the interconnection because ultimately we're trying to get the patient to their goals. Yeah. So it sounds, yeah. That, no, it sounds very rich. It sounds like you really have um, somewhat of an eclectic approach. Um, I know that you use an osteopathic model approach that's different from some other PT practices. Can you speak to that? Uh, well, yeah. It, 
you know, we're not osteopaths, but their principal structure governs function. So traditionally, if someone gets diagnosed with a knee problem, uh, they'll stretch the knee, do a little stim and do some exercise. Well, the structure governs function. That's what I was trying to allude to and not really, you know, mention that. But, you know, if the ankle is missing 10 degrees of tilting up, that will shorten their stride. In that ability, when they shorten their stride, the back of the leg, their hamstrings, their gastrocs all shorten. And by doing that, they're going to affect their SI joint. That's your pelvis connecting to your back. And when you affect the mechanics, you're uh, taking a chance on a neural compression, neurovascular compression. So we're actually looking at all those factors. We're looking for all the structural deficits that affect why that person came to us. Okay, great. Now I want to kind of call up your colleagues here. I wonder if we can, can we get a screen where we could kind of have everyone up? I don't know if we can, if we can do that. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay. Hi, here we all are. So um, I'm curious and any one of you can feel free to chime in, in terms of um, what you're finding in your practice, um, given the pandemic, like in other words, um, you know, are you, are you finding different kinds of things? Um, if anyone wants to speak to the protocols that you put in place or different kinds of reasons why people are coming in or people are not coming in. So does anyone want to take that? Go for I'll, it. I'll start. I mean, I think one of the biggest things we're seeing since, you know, March, uh, one of the things we're going to kind of hit on in, at the end here is, you know, people changing their, their work habits and, and their work from home, especially a lot of people coming in with, you know, neck problems, back problems, shoulder problems that really have to do with, with posture and, and sitting in ergonomic setup. I think that's one of the biggest things that we're seeing um, in the everyday population. Now, the, the other subset of that, I think in some of the more elderly people, we're definitely seeing more deconditioning in general, just people not going out as much, getting up as much, moving around as much either because they're afraid to or just don't have the means to or the help to. So I think those are the biggest, you know, subsets of people of conditions that we're seeing since the pandemic started. So so people who are um, working from home, obviously their setup's not great. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. And people who are elderly and maybe retired and don't have to work from home, but they're not getting out, they're not mobile, they're not exercising as much as they, they can. And so they're having some effects from that. Absolutely. Yeah. I would, I'd like to also say, oh, Mark? Yeah. Well, I'd also like to say the one thing, even though we're not trained for that, but there's a high level of anxiety and probably some low level depression. And, you know, to keep it simple, we got to move our body. They've shown 150 minutes a day uh, a week for exercise can help that. And that's everything Anthony's been saying. But most people are on edge when they're, they're coming here now. Um, because, so is, that, you know, is that the stats, Mark? 150? 150 minutes a week is, on average is a good way to control cardiovascular health, but also mental health. Yeah. So that's basically 30 minutes of walking every other day. It doesn't have to be at Andrea's level of a professional athlete, but the simple yeah. walk, you've got to move your body. Yeah. Yeah. So Andrea, yes, the professional cyclist here. Okay. So Andrea, actually, so on that point, why don't we go to a demonstration and what we're going to do is we're going to show folks what's not a great setup and then we'll show folks a great setup. And then if you have to make modifications at home, what you can do. So Andrea, do you want to take it away? Sure. So I'm going to demonstrate what a common setup that our patients are showing us. Um, I don't recommend this at home, but typically people who are now working from home are working at their kitchen table. They're sitting in a wooden chair and they're typing like this. And it doesn't take them very long to start getting neck pain, back pain, start getting carpal tunnel symptoms, start having headaches because Nothing is properly supported in this position. Even if somebody tries to sit up straighter, if you're in a bad chair like this, you end up slouching. And that puts a lot of stress on your lower back, again, on your neck. You've still got that pressure on your wrists. One thing that we like to say is laptops really aren't great for anybody because the monitor and the keyboard are connected. To have proper desk setup, 
this monitor and the keyboard need to be separate. And Mark's going to show in a minute the proper way to show up, set up your monitor and keyboard. Okay. And I'll before, show some before, tips for oh, you can't get a great. Setup. Okay. Sorry about that, Andrea. Before we go do that. Um, so that looks like a pretty, probably pretty average setup. There's probably a lot of folks that have a setup like that. Right. But I'm wondering, are you also seeing folks who are like uh -huh. typing on the couch or on the bed or things like that? Like in other places too, that are oh, great. Sure. People who are lying in their stomachs on their bed. Um, people who are just sitting in their chairs like this typing. I mean, I've ha I had somebody tell me that they lie on their back with their keyboard on their chest and they're typing like this. Yeah. And it's no wonder that their back and their neck are bothering them. So really, if you're working from home, you need to give yourself a good desk setup, but it's also important to not just work in one place. You might take your computer and go stand at a counter for a little bit or just get a change of position important to get up and walk around frequently. The human body is not really made for sitting for long periods of time. Our bodies well, are made for movement. So no, that's a good point because a lot of people are on like back-to-back -back Zoom calls, you know, and, and so they right. don't get up and move around. Okay. No. But I'll, I'll tell people, take your computer and stand while you're on your Zoom call just so that your body is doing something differently. Okay, really good point. All right, thanks, Andrea. All right, now, Mark, show us what the ideal is because we know this is not the ideal. So let's go to the ideal. All right, I'm trying to see. I think you guys can see me. There we go. Yep. Good. Good. So the first thing I would say is, is when you're sitting here, I have a stretch out. There we go. We can get some of the book. Yeah, that's good. We can see that. We can see your keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You see the keyboard? Yep. Okay. So the first thing I would say is you want an adjustable chair. You don't need to spend an expensive chair, but the arm should adjust, the seat should adjust, and the height. The most important thing is there's different postures that are, are, are to uh, that optimize good posture, but the simplest one for to keep it simple, think of the 9090. You want a chair that has a backing that supports the back where you can rest your, your uh, elbows, your arms around uh, 90 degrees. Could be a little higher, a little lower, but you want to stay in this, what they consider a power position and tip the seat back maybe 10 degrees. They call it the uh, executive position because it forces you to remember you don't want to sit with your body not using the back support. That's why they call it a back support. Your wrist are also in you know to say something with andrea where i see a lot of problems are people have like the edging of the uh like a table is very sharp and they're leaning on there you yeah know, that's compressing all kind of neurovascular bundles causing all kind of problems so if you have it like if i think you can see me if you're resting on a good chair 90 degrees no effort i actually have a wrist guard to keep it keep the wrists off and then, you know, the actual eye to monitor, your mm -hmm. eye, eye level should be about roughly at the top of the monitor. This is not my monitor. We, we did a quick jury rig, um, but eye there and, you're, and you stay centered. A lot of people have the monitor to the left or to the right. You always want to stay centered, approximately 18 to 24 inches. Basically, if you start squinting, Either you need your computer glasses, blow your font up, or move your chair. Okay. All right. So so this is the ideal setup. And so we can see, um, yeah, just the way you are with the way your hands are. Okay, great. So um, anything else you'd say about this ideal setup? Uh, you know, the last thing I would hit home, and Andrea started, and I'm a little more uh, the rigid one, you basically got to get up every 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, ergonomically they've done all the studies Atlanta back school and when I did an ergonomics course on that they really promoted people up every 30 minutes that could be about a it could be 30 seconds up you know I encourage people either if they get grossly in their uh, in their work you know they can set their phone to a, you know buzz every every 30 minutes or you know set up things on their computer 
Um, or most people that get really get a phone call during the day, I say, just to break it up, answer your phone standing up. Okay. So, so as long as somebody even just stands up for a minute within that 30 minutes, they're good. Decompress the back, just to get the blood flow going and stuff. Yeah. What do you think about those standing workstations? Standing workstations are fantastic. Remember again, the power position would be standing by your side, your elbows, Either they call this the in ergonomics power position 90, about 10 degrees below or above. You want to always have the monitor eye level. And if you start getting tired, you could have a small stool uh, and you could put one foot up to change your pelvis. Okay. Rotation. Yeah, that's great. You know, what? I'm, I'm seeing we've got some it's a whole bunch of questions here. Um, let's see. Um, okay, let's see. Um, w- can you elaborate on what is good posture? I think, I think we've covered that, right? Or is there anything else? Okay, we- well, the good posture is you're, you know, the biggest mistake. And I think uh, the guys will tell you this is we have a backrest. You know, the funny thing is in Connecticut, we'll have people willing to spend $500, a thousand dollars on a chair and they get this chair that adjusts everywhere. And the first thing they do is they lean forward and they don't use the backrest. So that's why I was suggesting tilting the backrest about 10 degrees. So it, they call executive position, like you're leaning back and your legs are on, on the desk, you know, the traditional movies where you see the executive. But just leaning it back is a reminder to use your backrest and, and use that. Okay. And straight ahead. You don't want to pull closer to the screen. Okay. You be able to stay on the backrest. So is it better to have a laptop or a desktop? Desktop. You can okay. still work on a laptop, but you got to think about it a lot more. And truthfully, you know, if you're, it's an investment. With COVID happening, you know, a lot of people are working at home and they don't see anything in sight of them leaving. I would say you're better off uh, investing in yourself, investing uh, in a good adjustable chair, maybe, you know, a, re- a regular, you know, tower monitor, the whole bit. And really get everything set up for you. Because long term, you know, the amount of people we're seeing, I would say a good, uh, I don't know, a good 50% of our patients are all ergonomic nightmares. And that's why they're coming. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Now let's go. So if somebody doesn't have that ideal set up, let's go to Andrea now. And Andrea, you're going to help us see how we could rig it up if we don't have the ideal set up. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There are a few key things that you should get if all you've got is your dining room table and your laptop. So the first thing you need is a Bluetooth keyboard because we want to separate your monitor from your keyboard. So you're going to take your laptop and you're just going to put it on something. It doesn't have to be fancy like this. It can be a box, a textbook, just anything that's going to put your monitor, like Mark said, slightly below eye level. So then you're going to take the Bluetooth keyboard and you're going to put it at the right height to allow your arms to be in that power position, like what Mark was talking about. Even better is if you can roll up the towel and put it here to use as a wrist support. And then you want to get a Bluetooth mouse. Again, the location of the mouse on a laptop is in the worst possible position. It puts a lot of strain on your shoulder and your wrist. So you want to separate the mouse from the laptop so that you can use it freely and not be relying on the laptop mouse. You want your mouse and your keyboard to be close to each other. You don't want your mouse all the way over here so you're like leaning to use it. You want it right next to the keyboard so you can type, go to the mouse without reaching. So with these three things, a box, a Bluetooth keyboard, and a Bluetooth mouse, you can get your desk set up pretty close to if you had a real desktop computer. Now, the only other thing I would recommend is getting one of these lumbar supports that you can put on the back of your chair. Dining room chairs aren't even comfortable to sit in for dinner, much less to sit in (laughs) as your chair. So you want to make sure that that lumbar support is in that curvature in your lower back. And like Mark said, you want to actually be able to lean into it because that's how it supports you. So then you're probably going to have to scoop closer so that your arms are relaxed, your wrists aren't cocked up, and you're in a nice, comfortable, stable position. 
So again, you can see you don't need a lot of fancy equipment to give yourself a better desk setup, just a few key things here. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's great. Um, and you know, we've had a whole bunch of questions coming in. I, I don't, we have like two more minutes. So um, maybe I'll take one of them that was from earlier on. But in terms of the, the work from home setup, so you've given everybody some really good practical tips. Um, I have a question from earlier. Maybe, Anthony, do you want to take this one? Um, sure. Why is your physical therapy different than other physical therapies in the, in the area? I think Mark hit on that, but is there anything else you want to add to that? Um, you know, I, I think just to hit home, using more of a, a whole body biomechanical approach, you know, really trying to figure out the root cause of what's going on. You know, some people are into just kind of, you know, treating the symptoms and sometimes your pain is actually a symptom of some other dysfunction in the body. So it's really kind of looking at it from a whole systems approach. You know, if someone's having pain with walking, whether it's their knee, their hip, their ankle, assess the walking, you know, what is not correct, what is not moving properly with their walking and try to get the whole system moving properly again so things aren't grossly butting heads. And it, it all comes down to biomechanics. Yeah. Um, so we've got like maybe a minute and a half, and I don't know if you have time to do full justice to this, Anthony, but um, one of the questions is around, I, I hear you also do orthotic fittings. How are your orthotics different than me going to a podiatrist to get fitted? Because I would never would have thought to go to a PT to get fitted for orthotics. Um, we do a brand of orthotics that is a little bit different. They are, they're fitted differently. They're kind of fitted in, in non-weight bearing. Um, that way, when you go to heel strike, they're already supporting your foot where a traditional orthotic, you know, as you hit the ground, it's almost like a barrier that kind of pushes up against the arch of your foot. So this actually kind of sets your foot up at heel strike to be in the proper position through the whole walking the gate cycle there. Um, it's a little bit cheaper. They work for quite a few people, not everybody, you know, we'd have to assess you and see if it is the right thing for you, but hmm. They work for me. I wear them every day. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, uh, I mean, there's so much more that we could cover, but unfortunately, I think we're out of time. So, um, Anthony, if somebody was interested in anything we talked about today, how might they reach this team here? Well, they could go to the website. I believe it's still carlsontherapy.com, soon to be carlsonprocare.com, but you could probably search either or and find it. They could call us here in the, the office in Bethel. You know, the number is 203 seven seven eight zero seven two zero um you know send us an email at you know one of the guys here at carlsontherapy.com you know give us a call we'd happy to ask you any and answer any questions anytime okay great all right thank you all for coming on the show and giving everyone some real practical tips um thank you, thank you sue you're, you're welcome um, i'm sue shaner with community forum until next time thanks for joining us